Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 7. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this was the mid-season finale of Supergirl, so Supergirl isn't going to be back until August. We've got over a 10-week break. Superman Lois is going to be on, so... Please be sure to stick around if you're a fan of the Supers because we're going to be reviewing Superman Lois every week like we were doing before Supergirl came on. But yeah, Supergirl is going away for a while and the cliffhanger of the episode reunited Kara with the rest of the team and Melissa with her family, well, her on-screen family. So super excited to talk about all of this because this is the episode we've been waiting for, the return of Supergirl. And it does happen. However, let's go ahead and break down this episode chronologically and we'll get towards that crazy, awesome ending. Let's hop to the start of the episode. What happens is we see Supergirl inside the Phantom Zone with Zor-El and Supergirl doesn't want Team Supergirl to come save her. This is just after she's been attacked by a Phantom and she is looking at her deepest fear and her deepest fear is that Team Supergirl and her family are going to die. And so she warns, basically, us that this is going to be treacherous with them coming into the Phantom Zone. Okay, so we go and we have Jean inside the tower, which he apparently has modified into a spaceship. And this is the spaceship we saw in the behind the scenes photos. We were like, hmm, this does kind of look like the tower, but the windows are different, the lighting's different. But that was part of the upgrade, so yeah, he modifies the ship and they enter the Phantom Zone and this is the whole thing. Also, it must be noted this is David Harewood's episode he directed and as he wrote this episode as well. And I'm gonna be honest, I think it was one of the better episodes of the season. I still think the Midvale two-part episode was definitely the best, both of those episodes. And then I would say probably this episode and then episode one. So very, very solid, this mid-season finale. So at the start, we have Brainy and Nia returning from Midvale, and apparently they missed three days, and obviously this is just a way for Team Supergirl to have already prepped for their mission in this episode. And I have to say, I'm loving Brainy and Nia at the moment, especially after those last two episodes where I feel like I know them so much more, and they had so much time to shine that I just super loved them, and every time they came on screen this episode, I was fully in for it. Okay, so let's continue with this. Kelly has a kind of weird speech, but it plays out in a big way throughout this whole episode. And this is because, you know, she kind of knows therapy. And I'm not 100% sure what it exactly was about, but it was definitely about them facing their fears. And it kind of inspired everyone to defeat their fears this episode because everyone is affected by the turbulence which causes like a 10 minute blackout in people's minds. So this episode was structured in a different way from normal. It was kind of like Pulp Fiction in the way that it had the segments that kept them flashing back to 10 minutes before and you would explore the different fears of all of our different characters. I thought it was a cool device that they used and I don't think Supergirl's ever done this before. I think maybe The Flash has when they've done some time travel. However, this is a very different type of episode structure and I really liked it, I thought it was really good. So we go to the first iteration and we have the phantoms, they've disappeared. You have Alex who saves John as the phantom attacks, but then she gets attacked by a phantom and this was such a great scene with Alex and John and Alex sacrifices herself and exits through the airlock and apparently it's because of Alex being infected that the Phantoms have been able to detect them. And so what was so good about Alex and Jean? Well, their conversation was really good and how passionate they are about all the different things, about saving Kara. And I have to say, my biggest complaint this season has definitely been Team Supergirl doesn't work without Supergirl, right? Like, they're interesting. However, they're just kind of rooting towards saving Supergirl and that's all they've been talking about this whole season. However, this episode was probably about the different individual characters and I really really liked that and I felt like Alex and Jean were more themselves than they've ever been this season and so I think Azzy and David did a great job. So, talking of flashing back, we flash back 10 minutes before and now we're with Lena and Nia and so Lena is fascinated by Nia's gauntlets and they talk about their mums and they never really had much time together in the past. I 
just kind of realized that in this episode because like she's talking about her powers like she doesn't really know her and that's kind of true to be honest like yes they've had interactions but they never actually like properly sat down as far as I can recall and talked about you know each other their powers and like why Lena's so smart their mums and obviously that's where they found a connection in this episode however Lena walks into some sort of alien creature who is created of water and you realize that this is some sort of nightmare and this is because when Lena was young she watched her mum actually drown and so Kalpi, this shapeshifter alien from her nightmares has come to life and she must face her fear in this episode and she ends up like stroking it and it kind of goes away. Okay, back 10 minutes ago again, this time from the perspective of Brainy and Kelly. So something is wrong with the phantom Q-wave energy from the ship's containment. So Kelly goes checks it out. And also Brainy talks a little bit and you get the kind of balloon bit later in the episode, which was very cool. And so Lena, Alex and Nia are possessed when she goes down there. And it's a homage to the Shining Twins as they all speak at the same time. I thought that was very cool and quite inventive and it was a great moment for Kelly. And once again, let's go back 10 minutes earlier. And it must be noted, the thing that they've done is they've made Jean, David say the specific lines at every single point that they go back. And that is the kind of segue and the camera moves in a different direction to the different pair of characters. And so in this instance, we go to Nia, and Nia dreams about the phantom being gone. She finds some sort of symbol, some sort of totem inside the cell, and Brainy reveals that the turbulence caused fear visions for everyone, and you're kind of like, oh yeah, like we're uncertain of what is true and what is inside people's nightmares throughout this episode, but it's good to get confirmation from Brainy that this is literal nightmares for them. And so Brainy, he goes flying off the ship. And then one more flashback, we go to Jean, where he realizes and reveals that the last 10 minutes have been all unaccounted for. And so people have been, for these last 10 minutes, having their nightmares and they've been stuck inside their own minds and they've been having to defeat them and they are actually able to defeat them. And this is one of my favorite scenes throughout that whole episode. So the ship is under attack from the outside with the phantoms. Jean goes and he fights the phantom inside the cell and he breaks through his fear in an epic montage. He even sees Kara in this, which was really cool. And he says, I'll show you what it's like to be afraid. And he uses his powers. He blasts through and he beats the shit out of him. And I really, really like that scene. Like, I think Jean was so good in this episode. And obviously David was directing, but he was also acting. And maybe that kind of collaboration between himself was the thing that needed to happen so he could be this good and he could actually feel like Jean because you know back in episode 2 I think it was I had a complaint that Jean didn't feel like himself that they wrote in like someone else like when he was super angry at the Silas guy and so this episode and you know the last few times we've seen him he's been getting more and more back to himself and this episode literally was like hell yes this is exactly what we want and this is what Jean is supposed to be like. Okay, so finally we go back to Supergirl. Melissa is back. Obviously we didn't see her the last two episodes. That was the first time ever that we hadn't seen her at all in an episode. And so she is back. She's with Zorel, aka Jason Bear, who plays him. And Kara is extremely scared. However, it is Zorel in this instance that snaps her out of it and he says, I cried a river, a notion of tears until there was nothing left in me, until you came, Kara. And so this was just like one of the sentences where he was sort of bigging up to Kara, like how important it is that she came and basically saved him from his nightmares, because literally the Phantom Zone is a nightmare, and he believes that nothing can stop them together, and this is where they go to face off against the Phantoms who appear over the ridge, and they're about to fight, and then a big flashing yellow golden orange light hits the phantom zone and you realize oh this is the moment where supergirl is going to reunite with team supergirl and what do you know kara feels the yellow sunlight energy and her cells are restored because obviously the phantom zone doesn't have a yellow sun or it doesn't even have a red sun and at this moment she's able to fly again and you can't help but be so excited to finally see them finally reuniting after like 
seven episodes. It's been such a long time, and it was also a reunion behind the scenes for Melissa, Kyla, the rest of the team, because Melissa had been filming separately for a month, and obviously since they've been filming in October, Melissa didn't actually show up till January because of her maternity leave, and so, you know, it's a bittersweet moment for everyone because it's been a long time. And so, yeah, the yellow sunlight comes out of nowhere and it kind of dissipates all the phantoms and Supergirl and zor they fly up into the ship and they reunite finally. You have Kara and Alex hugging and I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. I'm so happy that she is finally back. Supergirl is back, baby. She is back with Team Supergirl. We're gonna see this in episode eight. So the title of episode eight is Welcome Home, Kara. So this is obviously going to be a big thing. And now they're really going to capitalize on Supergirl being around and like them interacting properly because this is Supergirl's final season. And it's a shame that she was separate for so long. However, I've got to say what they did with the two part episode was fantastic because you felt like it was Kara, right? With Alex and you did have those characters, but just in a different form. And so the final cliffhanger for this episode is that Nixley is on top of the ship and she's probably going to be the main villain of like the first half of the season at least. We know she's going to be mixing up with Mixie. So she's going to return in a big way. And also it must be noted that zor is in the ship with Kara. And he's going to be going to Earth for the first time. So I reckon at some point you may see him go off to Argo and reunite with Allura. I've got a feeling that may be the way that they write out his character by the end of the season. But for now, he's going to stick around. He's going to be on Earth with Kara and the team. So that's super exciting. We've seen some stuff with him in the tower from behind the scenes. So that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Tell me what you think of this episode. I really enjoyed it. It's a shame that Supergirl is going away for like over 10 weeks. However, we're going to be continuing to make Supergirl videos as always. If you have any theories or ideas of what could happen in the next couple of episodes or towards the end of the season, let me know in the comments below. Also, you can always comment it on the community tab. I did put up a post recently where you can comment on that, and we're going to make a video on that very soon. However, click here to watch my latest video. And remember, later tonight or tomorrow, I'll be having my Flash trailer breakdown for next week's episode. So... Remember, Superman Lois is also back next week. We're going to be doing my reviews instead of Supergirl reviews, but still going to make Supergirl videos. Well, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.